you have a MacBook that's drawing 5 volts, they often like to do, not 20. This is like strange, uh, strange dust particulate in it. It almost looks like it spent a day at the beach or something. Um, we see a similar story on the back side of the board. Around some of our 3B8 AON caps and around our Wi-Fi IC. That does like to die a lot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dust this off. But I just kind of want to give it a once over before we clean it. Because these areas with all this you know, crap on them are, are going to be helpful for us later, essentially. Okay, so we've dusted this out. Dusted out the back side of our board. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, chassis just out of the way here. Oh, go there, sure. Um, we had a mess back here, and it's probably just something, I'm assuming this has, like, a short on 3v3 AON or 3v8 AON or something. Um, we're spiking up to 0.3 amps. I should be able to see on a thermal imager what is causing a problem. So I'll get in, get that out. Black and white mode. Um, but when we see that current cycle up, I'm assuming we'll see something lighting up on the board. There'll be something under the heat sink. Let's just look at the back side of the board. Okay, so it looks like it's something under our heat sink on the back side, other side of the boards. Let's get the heat sink off. Let's just look. Uh, I would say nothing in this area looks obviously bad. It is kind of surprising that it wasn't in the um, dirty areas. We saw something, but... Okay. Mm, that's unfortunate. Now, we probably do have a bad PMIC, um, but it could be some other rail around it is short, and this chip has a thin wire inside of it, so it just happens to get hot because of that. So let's check a few of our um, AON rails. Um, so we did indeed find a short on a line, and the line that we see, we have 7 ohms. On this line, which you should have uh, several thousand ohms. So I did go ahead and just solder a wire to it. And we can see right in the middle of the PMU. Um, so we do have a dead PMU, which is really rare on these, actually. It uh, almost never happens. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll replace it. Data is important. We want to get it going. I thinking, because honestly, this board probably is savable. Um... I have these tweezers that I made. They have little hooks on them. I really would like to get this off nice and clean. I'm going to hook these under the chip. I'm lifting up basically gently. Not as central as I like. I'm just blowing air away from the CPU here. Like that. You can get those off really clean by just doing hooked tweezers, and then you don't have to worry about um, if you have flat tweezers, like you might be grabbing it and you shift a little and you just knock a bunch of shit everywhere. Uh, you see, we got this off without pulling a single pad. Um, I was at uh, 430 uh, C and max airflow on a quick 861D. CPU is looking good. So we'll clean this area and then I'll pull one off of a, a donor, reball it, and um, Get it back on here, basically. Um, bad, bad. Okay. Let's clean this area. Let me put some leaded solder on here. Uh, I would assume kind of in general when these PMUs on this board fail, you'd probably see the line that we have here. 
failing. Uh, no signs of liquid damage, really. It was just a little bit dusty, and it was dusty uh, nowhere near this. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what causes this. I would assume either just kind of weird bullshit I2C communication stuff between chips, or a bad charger, maybe, or something like that. Hard to say. Probably will use a bigger iron to do this, because it's a pretty large chip. About the size of like an iPhone CPU. A pretty similar task. But we do want to get the leaded solder on all of the pads so the melting temperature is lower for when we wick, so we're not wicking pads. And yes, I do see that solder bridge on that caster down there. We'll get rid of that later. I'll go ahead and get big iron. It's soaking up quite a bit of heat here. This is like one of the few occasions where I'll actually use this big iron for stuff. This is just a really large chip array to wick. This makes it faster because this generates a lot more heat than the micro pencil. Um, or, you know, Xbox HDMI ports, stuff like that, PS5 HDMI, to heat up those ground legs that soak up a lot of heat. We're just playing with the rest of this with the micro pencil. And I think I can actually use my A7 iPhone CPU stencil to do this. Actually, I probably have the exact stencil for this chip somewhere. But I have too, uh, too many stencils to, to look through. So I think that A7 one will fit fine.
Okay, this is um cooled down a good amount now. We'll get our USB C cable, plug it in and see what's happening. This looks like it is turning on and it does seem to be turning on. That's wonderful. As we'll draw. Oh, this might be in like DFU mode or something. We'll see. I'm gonna clean off this board and get it back into the chassis and we'll see what's going on. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is on. Perfect. Okay, well, we'll get this cleaned off, get it reassembled. Um, very good. That was annoying. I'm sad that I, you know, fucked up the uh, chip install on the first time. I had to reball it again, but that happened. I was using uh, too much flux the first time and too much airflow. So um, I did a very thin coat of flux under the chip after wicking it again and then went down to like 45 airflow and just kind of slowly heated the thing up. Um, we'll get the board clean, reassemble it, test it out. Uh, I know Mangle on this was uh, data. I, I think this will just be a working uh, MacBook that can continue to be used, but we'll, we'll get a backup going just in case too. MacBook lives. I get my... Uh... You know, I dug around. I couldn't find a, a single other video on a PMU replacement for this device. So I think this will actually really help someone somewhere. So that's nice. Because I always say I hope this helps someone. You know? So I can't say I hope you learned something. I wouldn't be fair. Um, basically, what we had here uh, was a short circuit on this line right here, 1V8 AON. PMU. Um, gosh, I guess I initially looked at this a while ago, but I think we were getting like 5 volts, 0.2-ish amps, and we could just see this um, lighting up on a thermal camera. Sometimes when you have uh, a short circuit on a line, a chip might just be getting hot because it happens to be the thinnest wire in the circuit. Um, so we did then solder a wire to the line, I think like over here, or back here or something. Um, I think actually right here on this capacitor, if I remember correctly, this was like a few weeks ago. Um, and we saw the same exact behavior, so we could be pretty confident that, you know, the short was here. We removed this chip, we saw the short went away, pulled another one off of a donor board because I can't buy this chip because it's a proprietary Apple chip and they won't sell it, which is really annoying. So I have to buy a board from someone on eBay uh, and pull this chip off and then reball it and put it on. Um, why this failed? I'm really unsure. I would say it's kind of the classic, you know, this person just got unlucky. A solar flare struck their MacBook uh, with, uh, with such resonance that it killed this chip. Um, or, you know, some kind of electrical interference or something like that. I kind of say that like a joke, but, you know, I, I really am not sure why this would fail. Uh, charger issue, battery issue, perhaps. Um, actually, you know what I do notice is I have the battery plugged in and it's really... The battery doesn't seem like it's charging. It's running really low um, current, so their battery might be bad, too. I'll check that out. But in case we make a backup of this thing, uh, get it back together. Um, you know, I guess you know, key takeaway for something like this, or, you know, see this on, like, you know, iPhone boards or something like that, those little hook tweezers are really nice for getting a um, chip out like this and not disturbing the area around it because it's just so close um, to a bunch of other stuff around it. That's obviously not... You know, I mean, even on this, like the CD32s, this area is pretty dense. I would use those on something like this, too, if I was pulling them off. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully seeing that process helps one we'll kind of understand how to do this. Um, it's not like this will fail, and it's this line every single time. Um, but just sort of generically, if you had this chip shorted internally, you'd have something around here failing. Probably most likely something like 3V8 um, AON. Uh, I would assume would be the most common sort of failure just because there's kind of more stuff. But then there's also a lot more capacitors on this line. So if it did fail, it's probably more likely a capacitor would fail. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, that I'm seeing this is the failure. I would imagine this is probably fairly common sort of um, symptoms you might see on a failing PMU on this board. Um, I'm going to get the backplate back on on this thing and, and just make a backup, uh, basically. Um, that's pretty much it. I would suggest a battery if the, you know, uh, well, I guess this, this one's actually, uh, this is from another shop. So I'll tell them to, you know, ask their customer if they want to replace the battery too, which I think makes sense. Cause otherwise this MacBook's fine. There's no water damage. All the parts in it seem okay. Other than per, per chance or battery. So maybe 
Maybe this is what caused our issue. Um, we'll see you next time. Uh, everyone have a nice day.